You, a while ago, said that if Hillary Clinton were the Democratic presidential nominee, uh, you would run for president against her. What is your assessment of Barack Obama? My assessment of Barack Obama is that he knows what the score is in terms of the male distribution of power. Uh, he knows what he has said in the past about the Israeli-Palestinian issue and the need for uh, Palestinian rights and a two-state solution. He knows that uh, this war was a criminal war in Iraq, and we've got to get out of it in a responsible, expeditious manner. Uh, he knows that corporations have too much power over workers and consumers and small taxpayers and elections and the government. But when you watch him, uh, he stays at a very high plane of generality and abstraction about change, and we're one nation, and we're one people. And that may uh, sing with the, 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 the desire of people to, uh, to feel like they're part uh, of a unity. But it doesn't do much for the uh, productivity of the political dialogue. He does not get specific enough. Therefore, I think his main problem is he's censoring himself. And that is not sufficiently rationalized by saying that's just a tactic to win the primaries and get elected. After a while, day after day, week after week, when you self-censor yourself, you become a different person, and it's a reflection on character. I also think that if he didn't self-censor himself, if he started uh, reverberating to the many mainstream press reports on corporate crime, fraud and abuse, against pensions, against workers, against small investors, on the labor laws that are obstructing workers from organizing, on the need to have a foreign policy that isn't militaristic, uh, on the need to have a, uh, an efficient military budget, where he said we, he, he wants to enlarge and modernize the military, which is already absorbing half of the federal government's operating expenditures, on the need to direct taxpayer money to the necessities of the American people and not to pour them into corporate subsidies, handouts, giveaways, bailouts, which we call corporate welfare, on the need to protect consumers, especially in the inner city, from the rapacious practices of lenders, etc. I think he would enormously advance the number of people who would support him. And he certainly think, has the intellect to do that. Do you think he uh, is has different positions than Hillary Clinton? And what is your assessment of her? His declared positions almost fit the definition of protective imitation. They're too close to Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton is a corporate Democrat. There's no better evidence of that than the Fortune magazine cover story in June of last year, which basically said, business loves Hillary. Hillary is big business candidate. Uh, and so, uh, I think uh, the health care proposal is a perfect example uh, by Barack Obama of this protective imitation. Why doesn't he go for full Medicare? Why doesn't he go for a deeper analysis of the health care problem in this country, namely, the need to emphasize prevention of disease and trauma, the need to knock out $220 billion of billing fraud and abuse, according to the Government Accountability Office and uh, Malcolm Sparrow at Harvard University, uh, against the, uh, the need to reduce malpractice and stop blocking uh, action to, uh, to uh, go to the courts uh, for the tens of thousands of people who are injured or killed because of the small percentage of reckless doctors operating in this country who should have their license suspended. He should also focus on the enormous administrative expense savings from full Medicare, one payer, not 1,500 payers and cross billings, et cetera, that are now taking about three to four hundred billion dollars a year. Are you more— Stop the despair, want to stop the discouragement, and want to go forward. You know, the interesting thing, Amy, is the people have the power if they only realized it, organized it, and focused it. There are only 1,500 corporations, largely, that are running a majority of 535 members of Congress who put their shoes on every day like we do. Let me ask and, you uh, something. There are millions, uh, millions of people out there uh, who, want a, uh, who want a country they can bequeath to their uh, descendants what, with pride. What do you think of Barack Obama's recent uh, endorsement by Massachusetts Senator Ted Kennedy, along uh, with Congressmember Patrick Kennedy, uh, his son, and his niece, Caroline Kennedy, the daughter of President John F. Kennedy? This is the Obama campaign commercial made by Caroline Kennedy.
Once we had a president who made people feel hopeful about America and brought us together to do great things. Today, Barack Obama gives us that same chance. He makes us believe in ourselves again, that when we act as one nation, we can overcome any challenge. People always tell me how my father inspired them. I feel that same excitement now. Barack Obama can lift America and make us one nation again. I'm Barack Obama, and I approve this message. Your, your response to Caroline Kennedy's endorsement and her comparison of Barack Obama to John Kennedy. Well, I think it, it, it's an inspirational message. I, I think the Kennedys made the right move. Uh, I think they have been uh, simmering uh, quietly over the years uh, about uh, the, the behavior and uh, performance of Bill Clinton. I think that's part of the shift away from Clinton to uh, Obama. Whether it means more votes remains to be seen, but it certainly has given Obama a higher profile for a few days. Ralph Nader, if you it's only have a, we have less than a minute, John McCain said we could be in Iraq for a hundred years. He's a leading Republican candidate. Um, there, for those who say you'll take votes from the Democrats, none of them are saying we'll be there for a hundred years. What is your response that your run could be a matter of life or death for people in Iraq? Well, I would, I would hope that uh, we would push the Democrats into taking a more forceful stand in Congress to withdraw uh, from Iraq in a propitious manner. Uh, I would hope the Democrats would look at our progressive agenda, if I run, and say, let's take living wage away. Let's take a full Medicare away. Let's crack down on corporate crime, fraud and abuse. Let's get a, do a new tax system. Uh, I think this, uh, uh, this idea of taking votes away is a very pernicious subversion of progressive agendas and progressive movements in the country. I think John McCain's greatest uh, uh, Achilles heel is that he has demonstrated again and again, most recently in Florida, that he's the candidate of a perpetual war. Ralph Nader, I want to thank you for being with us. His website is naderexplorer8.org. democracynow.org is our website. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for joining us.